I am loving Excel Dynamic Arrays. And if you're using lookup tables in your Excel reports, then there's a couple of little tricks you might be really interested in. I'll show you. Let's go. So let me show you this scenario and, and talk you through what I'm going to do. Here's my data source um, brought in by Power Query, of course, pulled in from another file, um, some daily data, and we've got a role and we've got a work order. And I've got some extra information. I've got a rate that I want to look up assigned to that role, and I've got a work order number and who the manager is. And those two facts are on another table on this little look up, up table. Okay, so we've got the roles, etc. So let's just start building um, my little solution. And you need to take these things a little bit further to future proof them and to make your life and anybody who takes over your report to make their life a bit easier. And before anybody writes in saying, hey, you can use relationships and merges for all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, but it depends on the scenario. Okay, it really depends on the scenario. I've been doing an example like this in real life recently. And honestly, this was the best approach. Okay, so firstly, I wanna look up the rate. And whenever I'm doing this, if I'm adding a column to my Power Query table, so this table is coming in from Power Query, let me just prove that to you by deleting that, right click and refreshing. Okay, it is a Power Query table. I always make these little extra columns a different color, like gray, okay, and control space bar to highlight a column or you can hover the mouse over the top. Okay, if you don't know about tables, check out my video on that. Right, so there's our rate. And we're gonna do it X lookup equals, okay, X lookup. I wanna look up the role, comma, in this table here, comma, and bring back the pay. So that one there. Okay, nice and easy, enter. Beautiful, okay. But what happens if there's a new role? Let's say we just call this new. We get the old NA. But XLOOKUP's got a built-in if error. But what I tend to do is this, okay? I put whatever the word I wanna show up at the top here. And then in my XLOOKUP, and let me make this lighter because that's too dark. I don't like that. Right, that's much better. Okay, so in the XLOOKUP at the end, you put a comma, and if not found, you click on this and you must dollar sign it. So press the F4 key to lock the reference to that cell. Close the bracket, press enter, and you've now got missing. And if I had another new one down here and something else down here when the data refreshed, you know, they'd all get flagged up. That could be a really big list. This could be a 5,000 row table. Okay, you're not gonna scroll up and down. So I want a nice little alert. So I do a count if, okay, or, my little shortcut, now, there's a little video on how I use autocorrect a lot. If I do this, um, MMM for missing, space, I've got autocorrect built in to build my little formula for me. So you can do those sorts of things, but let me write it anyway. So equals count if, okay, click, in the, click on a cell, control space bar, or as you saw before, you can click with the little mouse by hovering over it to highlight the whole column. Okay, count that equal to missing press enter, there's three of them. And I wanna format that as red. So I've on my access analytic toolbar, again, this is free, you can download it, you know, I'll send, put a link in the show notes. I've got a little button that I use all the time. It's called format not zero. I wish there was a built-in Excel one. Equals there is, it, is there, but not equal to isn't. You have to get into the weeds underneath the buttons. So format not zero, beautiful, okay? Three items missing. So that's great. And you can do the same thing for, you know, work order. I could do um, manager and equals X lookup, this value. You get the idea, comma, in this table, control space bar, comma, bring back whatever's in this table, comma. But if it's missing, okay, just I'm going to put the letter M there for a second, right? And rather than the letter M, again, I'm just going to refer to double click on that, click on the word missing, F4 to lock it in. Okay, so if there is a new work order, A, it just says missing, and you do the same sort of thing with a, with a count, okay? You could even copy and paste it across and then change the reference. 
get the idea. Right, but what I like to do is this, okay? They're missing, so what should you do? Well, I give a little hyperlink now to the end user or to whoever's taken over this report. I build this stuff for other people a lot, but for me as well, it'd be quite handy if I had a little hyperlink to jump me to the rate table, because that rate table could be on six pages in somewhere. So use the hyperlink function, so equals hyperlink. And this is the way I do this to, to save sort of clicks. You actually have to write double quote hash, but I don't do that yet. I go and click on the column of the table where the roles are, okay? Do a little comma and then say, jump to roles, okay? And this causes a little error because it's trying to spill down the whole table. And it's this bit that you then put a little, okay, maybe put a few spaces in here. You've got to put the hash at the start, okay? And then you've got to put a little double quotes. Oops, you've got to put a little double quotes in there. A little bit fiddly. And you are then hard coding in essentially this column. So there are potentially other ways of doing that, but you know, just for demo purposes, click on that, it jumps you there. All right, so that's pretty nice. Okay, I thought there must be a better way of doing this sort of reference rather than hard coding it in. So a potential solution is this. You could go equals cell and then do the address option, okay? And go and refer to the column roles. Okay, so that's the address and you can hyperlink to that, which makes the formula look a bit. So you've got to put the hash in there and then you can do an ampersand. It makes the formula look a bit ugly but it's dynamic and if somebody changes the table name, the cell won't, the formula won't break. Um, jump to roles. That's probably a better, you know, actually that's probably a better way. Jump to roles, click on it. And it doesn't matter if this table, this heading gets changed to role. Okay. This hyperlink still works. Beautiful. Whereas this one will fail because we hard coded in roles. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, and then check this out, one more thing. I want to be able to go to here and actually show a list of the missing roles. So new roles, okay. We're gonna use the filter function, which is a great function. So I wanna filter this list where, comma, uh, this column, the rate equals, this cell and then press F4 to lock that in. Okay, F4, close the bracket. There we go, there's the list of the missing items. All right, um, let's get rid of any, if there were any duplicates, we could get rid of those. So let me just change this to, let me change this one to new with a lower case. So if we go back here, look, new and new, I don't want both of them. So we could just wrap that in a unique, okay, unique. I like putting a few spaces in my formula as well, just to make it nice and easier to read. And you could even wrap that in a sort to get it to sort in the right order. Okay, but don't leave it there, don't leave it there. Check this out, what if there's no missing roles? Okay, so let me just go back. I'll actually refresh the Power Query. Okay, right click, refresh, it's updated. Okay, there we go. We go back to our list, oh, calc, because there's no, nothing to filter, but the filter, argument has an option in it. So I just do the comma, okay, inside the filter function. Okay, if empty is the argument. So if it's empty, I wanna put, and I'm gonna put a little emoji in there with a Windows key full stop and look for the tick. Okay, I'm just gonna put a tick and say all roles present. Okay, double quotes. All right, so that's the option. So it just shows that if there's no missing roles. And as soon as there's a missing role, let me go in here and say new one or whatever it is. This then lists the new one. And I can just copy and paste that. That's pretty cool. All right, um, and then let me just show you this. You know, you can highlight duplicate values. So I could, you know, I've highlighted this column. You can go um, home, conditional formatting, highlight duplicate values, and you get that color coding, okay? But if that's a big list, 
You want something more obvious, just in your face. Hey, there's duplicates, because you do not want duplicates in your lookup table. So it's a counter function. Okay. So I, I do it this way. It, it's a bit of a complicated one, and I've got a little shortcut in my um, autocorrect. A little link will pop up to take you to how I wrote this formula. But if I write DDD for duplicates space, it writes my countifs formula for me. And I just double click on this, pick my column and press enter. And it says, look, there's a duplicate, right? One or more duplicates. And I can go to my little toolbar and say format not zero, click on that. And if you actually want a list of the items, I've got another little shortcut, DDDL. All right, double click on this little bit, column A. Click in here, control space bar, enter. That then lists the duplicate items, which is pretty cool. And it's dynamic. So if this one got doubled up, it shows up here. So there we go, all sorts of little features. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let people know about it, share the channel, love getting your comments, and I will catch you later.